Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Okay, sealed in the early access event, courtesy of Wizards of the Coast. Let's dive into it. Our rares opened three Twilight cards. That's impressive. The white one and the black one, definitely the more impressive ones. Especially the white one if you can cast it for x equals 5. Then we've got Tacothal Inquiry Dominus to maybe double proliferate. We've got the sword, which is awesome in every deck. And uh, after playing a draft, people have ways to remove artifacts, but it's not like every deck necessarily has a ton of them, so still likely to stick around. And then we've got Vran, fine to drop, definitely not a bomb. So yeah, hopefully we get to play a few of these Twilights and Sword should not be too difficult to fit in. Let's go color by color, starting with our white cards. So I'm quickly gonna address some of the standout cards. I'll ignore some of the weaker ones. So Glider could be good if we can get a Corrupted deck together. We've got the Duelists, great with Double Strike and Toxic, can deal two poison damage in one combat step. Then we've got the Raptor, also good in a Toxic deck, good curve of Duelist into Raptor. The Lightbringer, only card I would consider in the more dedicated equipment decks. The Bardish could be a fine curve topper as well, especially in Sealed when the format tends to be a little bit slower than Draft. The Enforcer could also be fine with enough artifacts to enable it. And then double Apostle of Invasion. So if we can get a Corrupted deck together, this could be an excellent curve topper. And then of course our Twilight. So Twilight does potentially play well with the Apostle if we can get some Might tokens. And then to that end we also have Charge of the Might to make two Mights at instant speed, which have Toxic 1 to poison the opponents, or can deal a bit of damage. Then in blue, get the Synthesizer, especially good in blue-red. Watcher for the Artifact deck, double Prologue, could be an, a way to enable Toxic in our blue-white deck, for instance. Thrummingbird can proliferate, can add more poison counters, maybe uh, oil counters as well. No plus one counters in this set. Got the Raptor, also just a decent three drop. Reject Imperfection gets a little bit better in sealed compared to draft since it tends to be a little bit slower. People play more bombs, so having a counter spell is good. Been impressed by the Trawler Drake in the right deck. And then, of course, Tacothal. The uh, Quicksilver Fisher is fine in most blue decks. And then the Strider we might also consider in an artifact deck. So blue-white is pretty deep, but it lacks removal. That's kind of the glaring issue in blue-white so far. So let's take a look at black. Double Skull Bomb. Always happy to play these. All the Skull Bombs are great. Then we've got the Skull Dweller as an early Death Touch Toxic creature. Not gonna play Duress. Uh, the Siphoner, another good Toxic Enabler, Anoint with Affliction, excellent removal, whether you have Corrupted enabled or not. And then Inquiry, another way to add a Poison Counter. Double Vraska's Fall as well, so these are good Corrupted Enablers. And uh, Necrosquito can slowly grow over time. Got uh, Paladin as a potential 2 for one when it enters, so that's pretty good too. And then Twilight. So black is not incredibly deep, but the card quality is certainly there. Then red has triple scamp. Could be good in a very dedicated kind of blue red spells deck, but outside of it, probably something I would avoid. Batterfist, good equipment. Comes attached to a 2 2 rebel thanks to 4 Mirrodin. So it's actually a 2 mana 3 1, but also counts as a non creature spell for your blue red deck, so that's nice. The Crescendo is a decent pump spell. And Volt Charge, a great removal spell in red, also lets you proliferate. And then the Splitter, also an equipment I like, 4 2, essentially for 4. And if the Rebel dies, you still have the equipment left over. Okay, so yeah, problem so far is that all the colors seem equally powerful almost. 
So they're very split up, which is not what you want in an ideal sealed pool. You would much prefer one or two colors being above the rest. And then green. The sack could be good in a longer game. Got uh, thirsting roots. Just good, especially if you're planning to splash a third color, which is also probably more common in sealed compared to draft. And uh, triple canopy. One of these could be main deckable. Probably don't want a second copy. And then, uh, yeah, the troll I also like if you can enable it. So red, green, blue, green are probably the best homes for it. And a double battle chair. Ooh, that's a pretty exciting curve topper. 6-6 six, six trample and then still an equipment for 7 that you can move around. Green twilight. War whip for red, white as well. And triple terramorphic expanse. Ooh. Okay, Prophetic Prism, additional mana fixing, and Fraxin Atlas. So we actually have a lot of mana fixing for being a uh, seal pool here. And then Sword of Forge and Frontier, of course, we're going to play. So yeah, that's our entire seal pool. So at first glance, it's not entirely clear which colors I should be playing. But it feels like with the amount of mana fixing we have, a three-color deck... Maybe two colors and a splash, but it can be a pretty heavy splash. Might be doable as well. And because our pool is so split across different colors, that might be the best approach. So cards I definitely want to play. Sword, Prism, probably going to make the cut, Triple Expanse. And then the bombs that I would like to play. The whites, Twilight for sure. And then in blue, there's Tankothal, which ideally we would play, but if we don't have a lot of proliferate synergy, it's also not the end of the world. Then in black, we've got like the uh, Anoint with Affliction, and then the Black Twilight. In red, I like Volt Charge mostly, and then there may be some equipment synergy with the War Whip as well, but yeah, maybe red is not quite there yet. And then green, as we said, double battle chair. Troll could be good, especially in blue-green. Problem is, the Twilight seems to be the best white card by a pretty large margin. There's not a ton of other white cards I'm super hyped about. Maybe if we get black-white together with Corrupted, the double Apostle could work. But if we go black-white, we give up on the double battle chair and the troll. So yeah, this one's a, a tricky build for sure. Are there any other redeeming qualities in green besides battle chair? So yeah, it's really just troll and double battle chair that I'm excited about. Twilight doesn't even find a chair to begin with. So maybe green is not as good as I make it out to be. In which case, yeah, maybe black, white, blue, some sort of Esper color pair with Poison Synergy to enable Corrupted is the way to go. Although my main concern is the lack of removal in those colors. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll give it a shot. So if we're going Corrupted, I want some Poison Enablers. Maybe Charge makes it. Raptor's good. And then probably don't have enough artifacts for Enforcer, but we'll see. Bardish, Double Angel. And then in blue, maybe Watcher, maybe Double Prologue, Thrumming Bird, Raptor, good for the Flying Archetype. Trawler, we'll have to see whether we have enough ways to enable it. Fisher. Does not strike me like a logbook deck. We would have to go pretty heavy on the artifacts. It is good with a cheap Skull Bombs, at least. And then uh, in black we've got the Skull Dweller, good Enabler for Corrupted, Skull Bomb. Maybe Whisper's good enough, Siphoner, Run, Inquiry, Hive Master, Double Fall, Necrosquito, probably good enough too. I guess we do have the double Vraska's Fall in black. Not a great removal spell, but uh, it does get our Corrupted online. And then Paladin. And then I may or may not want to play Atlas. 
So how many artifacts do we have in this deck so far? Eight. So there is a world where I want I, and then maybe logbook. Although we have to be pretty sure that we're an artifact deck before we play a logbook. Could always add a helm as an extra equipment. Not a fan of the experiments. And then Imperfection only card I want to consider if I'm blue as one of my primary colors, since it's double blue, which is otherwise going to be difficult to cast. All right, and then maybe a complete devotion as a trick could make it. So let's take a look at our curve here real quick. So our plan is to kill the opponent with large flyers. Double Apostle helps with that. Fisher reinforces that plan as well. The Enforcer might be good enough since we seem to have quite a few artifacts. I still need to probably pick two primary colors and a secondary color. And how much proliferate do we have? Not a whole lot. So if we don't have a lot of proliferate, then Tacathol loses some value. So it's possible we just want to go black-white without a blue. Since what are the blue payoffs really, if we don't want Tacathol as much? Yeah, this might just be a black-white deck after all. And probably can get away with just double expanse. Fisher can go. Okay, so 17 lands, so would need to make five more cuts. Yeah, three five flyer for four is definitely above average, but um, not a reason to mess up our mana base. That's my take on it. So five cuts can separate creatures from non-creatures, which is always useful in a sealed deck. Make sure we have enough. So what are the corrupted payoffs? We've got Glider, and then we've got Double Apostle, and Anoint with Affliction. Those are what I would call corrupted payoffs. Probably don't need Atlas, even though it is, I guess, a corrupted payoff as well. And it helps ramp into a White Sun's Twilight. Don't have a lot of 5 drops, which would be a reason to want Atlas more, because then we can curve Atlas into a 5 drop on turn 4. But if we look at our 5 drops, only really Bardiche as something I would actively want to play on turn 4, thanks to Atlas. So we'll cut to Atlas. I think Sword's good. It's great with a Double Striker, good with our Flyers, of which we have a couple. And then uh, Whisper of the Dross. Not the most impactful removal spell. And I don't foresee poisoning my opponent to death very often. So it's mostly helpful in setting up Corrupted to get the first three poison counters. But I think we'll be able to get there without Whisper. And then keep Twilight. Double Skull Bomb for a bit of recursion so we can get back our Apostle late game. One Complete Devotion I don't mind since we seem to have a decent number of toxic creatures. And then Charge of the Mites is removal at the end of the day. I like Inquiry for a bit of card draw. Could see cutting one Vraska's Fall even though it's a Corrupted Enabler. Still not the best removal spell. And then... I like Bardiche as kind of a late game play and mana sink. So two more cuts. So how many artifacts do we have left? Six. So at that point do we still like Enforcer? Skull Bomb also not an artifact that tends to stick around for very long. Prophetic Prism also loses value if we don't care about artifact synergy or mana fixing. So maybe we just cut Enforcer, cut Prism and then we've got a deck. Yeah, this seems playable. Decent curve. Good amount of removal. And then our double twilight as kind of our bombs. Even split between black and white. 
So I like the double expanse for a tiny bit of fixing, although we could probably do without it too. Since we don't have a lot of double black or double whites, by the time we need double white we should have it. Having a tap land could be awkward. Although it's only really bad if we want to play a Skull Dweller on one. So I think I'll still play an Expanse. And then between Plains and Swamp, of course we have Dross Pits as an extra black source. Should probably cut a Swamp then. Okay. I think we've got our deck. Let's give this a shot. And seems fine. Hopefully we get to combine our uh, duelist with a sword. Duelist while we can still attack with it. Hopefully get two poison damage in. Opponent blue-red it seems. So one part of the protection is going to be irrelevant here. I'll attack, see what they do. If our opponent keeps up counter spell mana, I may not want to commit the sword yet. So let's just go with the Hive Master, keep developing our creatures. And this way if they have removal for Duelist, at least we're not set back as much. Alright, Forge, that's slowly going to take up to make Frexian Horror Tokens. Can block it for now. Okay. So, I've got a couple options. I could play Vran, play Skull Bomb and sack a Skull Bomb to draw in the hopes of drawing a land so we can play and equip swords in one fell swoop. The only downside of swords next turn, if we have to play and equip it, is that I'm less likely to have the mana to cast whatever we exile. So maybe I do play a sword now and sack Skull Bomb to help hit my land drops. That should probably be step one. Okay. Opponent at 5 poison already, 13 life. Don't imagine we'll win with poison damage very often, but it could happen. Splitter. Yeah, the protection from red here means we'll be able to attack past the rebel. So don't mind if I do. And then what if we just completed devotion? 5, 10, 13? Well, if they don't block Hive Master, they're dead. I think I don't play Vran before attacking, since we might want to cast some things of Duelist. And then I could use Devotion to save Hive Master, Or I could see what we hit off Sword first, since we'll get to exile four cards here. Yeah, let's see what happens. We also get to play extra lands. Oh yes, this feels nice. We play Glider. Do I want to play Vran or just keep up Devotion? Seems safer. Yeah, this combo is pretty good. It's weird seeing a black white deck ramping, but uh, yeah, Sword's pretty useful. Glider is going to pump the team when we attack. Opponent splashing green, it seems. Immobilizer will keep the duelist tapped down. Although we can move the sword. And I'll take three. So I guess move sword to the might token. They'll maybe tap the mites and then we should still be able to kill them with glider and duelist. I 
That's still tapping Duelist. So, plus one. Yeah, this should be enough. Kind of want to see what we exile with the sword first. But oh well. Alright, GG's. That was impressive. Alright, let's see how the Black Sun's Twilight works out. Removal, removal, removal. Not really working towards anything, but uh, we'll see how the rest of the game pans out. Opponent on the red deck. Okay. This is an instant, so I could wait. There's not too many instant speed tokens or creatures the opponent could play to punish us. And maybe our opponent commits an equipment. Although I guess I don't want to give them the discount either. So I should just do this now. There's an argument for playing a different removal spell and keeping fall for something bigger. Although at the same time... It's nice to be mana efficient. Okay, so we can anoint the token if we'd like. Although the uh, hover wings is still very good. Pumping all equipped creatures and giving flying as well. The alternative is casting Inquiry. Kind of want to keep this to cast it for larger amounts. So we can just exile the token attack for one. Not an exciting turn. But it's gonna take a while for them to re-equip. Okay. I guess that works. Now a 4-2. Still has an effect even when not equipped. Okay. That's uh, a good draw. So next turn I could play and equip it. And the protection from red is very relevant. Bardish, yeah, and that gets plus two plus so here. So if I go glider. Equip attack. I can still play duelists. Which is not that great, but uh, I think I do want to get the card advantage from sword. Although if we exile something expensive, I'm not going to be able to play it this turn either. So there is a world where I should just equip and stay back on defense, and then maybe next turn attack. And take full advantage of the sword's ability. And hope they don't have a white removal spell for glider. Okay. So white removal spell is probably game over. Another Bartish. Yeah, that's uh, pretty good. Pono's deck looks more like a draft deck than a sealed deck so far. Very synergistic. We've got our work cut out for us. Can I afford to attack? Doesn't feel like it. Although I guess I could attack and then play another creature equip it. Although they could still give flying to fly over the duelist and inflict a lot of damage. Because at some point we need to pull ahead with a sword too. If I just play Apostle here what happens? Got a 4-4 flyer. Don't really want to trade it for the opponent stuff either. So maybe I attack and then I might end up using Twilight. Could play Raptor equip it. They can go Raptor, equip sword, and then cycle devotion basically. Just to draw. Or I could play duelists. I think I would rather draw. Although, 
I am just dead if they find an answer to the raptor, which is kind of scary. Alright, let's just play duelist then. Alternative was keeping up Twilight for X equals 2, which could have killed the uh, Flying Rebel at least. So our opponent has 2 poison, 1 more, and this has double strike. Opponent goes for it. And a solo band. Mostly just a 3 3. Okay. Ooh, White Sun's Twilight. That has to be great here. So attack. Get our extra cards. Hopefully, mostly draw lanes. And then I can uh, easily reset the board. And then the Black Twilight can get a creature back. Maybe there's a world where I don't end up casting the Sweeper, in which case I'll keep Glider back. And the one damage probably doesn't matter. Alright, land Skull Bomb, perfect. So play Skull Bomb, and then wipe the board for X equals 6. Getting to see all our rares in action here, even against a very good red-white equipment deck. The War Whip too, yeah. Our opponent's deck really looks like a draft deck, which is a compliment. Splashing green as well, apparently. So we can do a few different things. Equipping Sword. Probably a good starting point. Could get back Raptor and play it. Although that still doesn't give me a lethal. So probably safer to attack first, see what happens. They can block one token. Or I could take out the Rebel first. Even getting back a creature. Yeah, that's probably better. So X equals 6, although 5 is enough to get back a creature here. And we can go for Raptor. Opponent at 9 poison. Okay, that worked out. Both a sword and a white sense twilight, putting in a ton of work. Sweet. Double win, both poison and regular damage. Awesome. Okay, on the play, hoping to set up a twilight. Sure. So we'll go Vran into Raptor most likely. At some point we'll have to think about how many creatures we actually want to deploy so we don't overextend into our own sweeper, but early on I think it's still better to play stuff out normally. Okay, go for Hive Master now maybe. Could have attacked first, maybe finish off their creature with uh, Twilight, but I would rather preserve my removal for later. Yeah, I guess we can sack Hive Master, keep Vran, and drain the opponent for a bunch. The extra life gain is nice. A land is good too. 
So Raptor, Fly the Might. Try and get our Corrupted Synergies going. And then next turn Inquiries, one more Poison. So then our Angel already has Double Strike. Well, this is a problem, and it's pretty close to becoming indestructible as well. So could attack with a raptor, and then maybe finish it off with a twilight. We'll see if they take it, and if they take it, then uh, we can inquiry. And hope they don't make it indestructible. Okay. So, Anoint is live, which means we can exile Tekathal even if they make it indestructible. And I guess Twilight also gets around it if we get to X equals 5. So not actually all that concerned. We just make it awkward to set up our Twilight in the near future. So I could just Anoint Tekathal now. And move on. Or we can play a slow game where no one does anything until they overextend enough for me to White Sun's Twilight. Which could also work. Since I don't think the Raptor is going to get there by itself. So I'm happy just sitting back. Braska's fall. Okay. Yeah, just kill the Might. That one's not the Edict that can sack a non-token. Synthesizer up to two counters, so they need one more for potential indestructible. Okay, Bardish adds something to the board without necessarily overextending, so I don't mind. Then we'll still have Anoint available. Yeah, but I play a couple more creatures, I might just... White Sun's Twilight here, but... I have to make sure it lines up properly. Can trade for Hive Master and or Token here. Get the extra Vran trigger. And that way we also clean up the Might that's left over. Opponent just wants to draw, I guess. And Paladin to get it back, makes sense. And they're gonna replay it right away. Well, now the coast seems clear for White Sun's Twilight. Ooh. Well, sword's gonna be better once we deal with the board first. So let's do that. Do I wanna attack for any reason? I guess I could attack with a Raptor and they might take it. Right, they're just gonna chump with a Watcher. Could definitely still wait a turn since we're at 24, not under any pressure. The main concern is a counter spell and then Tekathal becoming indestructible and forcing me to anoint first or Black Sun's Twilight. So this seems like a relatively safe spot to do it. Get an extra Vran trigger, put it down to 8. And then now the equipment can maybe close out the game for us. Another Paladin, okay. Get back a uh, 3-drop and play it, perhaps. So in the graveyard, we could get back Vran once again. Or maybe Raptor to give a Might flying. And then we can maybe hit with Sword as well in the same turn. 
And there's Ive Master. Devotion is also good. Really an embarrassment of riches. Maybe just Twilight for five. Get back Vran. And then attack with all the mites is good enough. Alright, opponent has seen enough, understandably. All the two Twilights got it done there, then needs a sword after all. Okay, we're on the play, and seems keepable. Skull Dweller. No turn two play. Turn three inquiry. Put on the red green, it seems, and actually drew a two drop. So we get to curve out perfectly. Inquiry will potentially enable Corrupted for us. And hopefully hit our land drop for the Necrosquito. Up to four poison already. Vorax a good one. 3-3 three, three, that finds a land when it enters. Okay. Think Necrosquito and then just attack with a Skull Dweller. They probably trade since they have larger creatures they want to protect from Death Touch, but at the same time we get to grow the Necrosquito. And we might be able to get our one drop back later. Either Skull Bomb or Twilight. Okay, the Reservoir. We'll have to see how that performs. And the Icar Plate. So this turn we can just play two more creatures out. Attack with the Necrosquito. Seems fine. Reservoir is quite good with a Golem since that can pump creatures with oil counters on them. But I'm hoping to hit one more land drop before we Twilight. So we can actually get a creature back. Ooh. All will be one with a churning reservoir. That's a combo. Well, I guess we just kill the golem now while we can. And then uh, tank with a team. Opponent at 8 poison. So they're close to dead. And a complete devotion left over here. So we had a very aggressive start this game. No bombs needed. Sprinter. Okay, that's a combo with all will be one for sure. Two counters, two damage. Although opponent's gonna die to regular damage too here. And they explode. Awesome. Definitely good to see the potential of all will be one in this set with oil counters. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, yeah, get to see our siphoner in action, maybe. Opponent on a green deck. Two toxic flying creatures should be able to set up corrupted for us. Luckily, no reach. A red green. Have not seen a whole lot of red green yet. Adaptive, a good one. We'll get additional oil counters when the opponent plays larger creatures. For now, then go with Raptor. Could technically try and charge the adaptive to kill it. That doesn't feel great. Especially when the opponent could technically have a one mana answer to the siphoner here. Basilisk does not have reach. Just a 1 3 Death Touch Toxic. So they still have potentially one mana from the Cultivator. 
and our opponent hangs back. Lando's good. I think this turn we're probably gonna inquiry, and then I want to inquiry before playing land since we have two tap lands. So let's try that. Even though I could play the planes in case I draw my black one drop. But I have more tap lands than black one drops, I think, so. We'll see how this works. Perfect. Attack. And then... Even if our opponent takes out one of our creatures, Paladin can get it back next turn. And now Corrupted has been enabled, so Noins is just two mana exile a creature, which is great. Ooh, Miglaws. That's a good one. Definitely gonna try and take that out as soon as we can. Mirex can also win a late game situation by making additional might tokens. So we've got our work cut out for us. Free from flesh. Yeah, that's quite the combo with adaptive since two oil counters is plus two power and toughness. Okay, all of a sudden we're at 10. But we do have two removal spells at the ready. Problem is, charge doesn't quite do much here. So I can take out Miglos and then play Duelists. And that's about it. Alright, let's hit for three. Two poison. Maybe I'm better off hanging on to Charge of the Mites to make two 1-1s. One -ones. Although opponent's likely to keep Cultivator back. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna really be able to make two poison creatures with it. But if I can, I could potentially deal four poison next turn. So maybe it's better than playing a Duelist, which doesn't really block all that well. It would mostly be to set up a three damage charge. So best case scenario, opponent taps out for like a haste creature, but a haste creature is also likely to kill me. So there's not many scenarios where we actually win next turn that don't involve drawing something else. Attack for seven. So if they have a Volt Charge, they can just burn me out. I could charge the Cultivator dealing two to it, but then, you know, Volt Charge kills my Raptor. I don't kill Cultivator, and I'm probably losing two. So I don't think charging the Cultivator is the option, or the right option. Okay, well now I guess I have to respond since this would be lethal. So I guess I worked out. Still down to four. And a White Suns. Doesn't reset the board, but can gain a bunch of life and make some mites, so it's not actually all that bad here. Should be able to go wide next turn to poison, even if they answer a flyer. So I'll go up to eight. Opponent's got six on the board. So is there a world where I want to like play a duelist or paladin instead? Paladin could be good if they kill my flyer, but at least this can block a Basilisk. Could play Duelist and then White Sense for two. Go up to six life, have an actual blocker back for Adaptive, and still have five poison creatures. Yeah, I think Duelist White Sense for two is probably the safest play overall. I guess, yeah, removal on duelists would still kill us, that's true. So what's more likely in this spot? Removal versus pump spell. It's hard to say. Can be titanic growth, since that they would have played last turn. Acre plate, that's fine. So they have one blocker back, so we should be able to get the poison victory. Awesome. And 
there we have it. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, yeah, our hand seems promising. Especially if we can get our sword going in the right matchup, especially. Uh oh, another turn one adaptive. That's a powerful start. So, probably play Duelist if I'm planning to trade instead of Ran. Although, don't have high hopes of actually stopping the adaptive. At least a sword should be good against green. Ooh, Glissa. Yeah, that's a bomb. So can't actually block the adaptive, so we'll take it. Destroys enchantments, not artifacts at least. But yeah, this is basically impossible to stop in combat. I could attack, since if they block I can Devotion. And the 2-2 two -two isn't a particularly good blocker anymore. Opponent takes it. Play Hive Master, I think, instead of Sword. Because if we tap out for Sword and they have removal, it's kind of a disaster. I mean, removal here would also be bad, don't get me wrong. And it's definitely going to be an uphill battle. Gliss attacks. Can block it. And that's gonna start drawing cards. Blue green, okay, so splashing. Maybe black. Okay, we found an answer to Glissa. That's great. So we can play Vran alongside it. Question is whether we want to attack first. Feels a little sketchy. Could also just keep up. Complete devotion. Opponent could still have Tyvar's protection in place here. So maybe better to pass. Although the plus two plus two is going to be much better on offense with first strike. But I guess I'll still keep it on defense to maybe hold off the adaptive. Possible we should take out the Observer too, but uh, I'm less concerned about Poison at the moment. Still a Flyer that we'll eventually need to deal with. Observer and Glissa attack. Nope, Glissa reconsiders. Just the Observer. If that's the case, do we just kill the Observer? Because at least Sword holds off Glissa once it's equipped. So yeah, let's uh, try this instead. That works. Gonna regret not using up my two mana here, and oof, Tekathal. Double blue card now. That would have been perfect to exile with Annoyance. Yeah, that's rough. But I guess final bosses are final bosses for a reason. So Tekathal is going to kill us pretty quickly. I can play Sword Equip, hold off Glissa at least in the meantime. Although now blue removal is also a concern. Probably equip the Hive Master, so even if they play another creature to grow adaptive, I can hold it off. So we need to hope for a miracle here. Tekathal can also become indestructible now thanks to the adaptive. So, I would need to draw the Black Sun's Zenith, or Twilight, to give it minus five, minus five, and still take it out, or wait for the point to be tapped out, and then find a different removal effect. Troll draws and gains the three, another great card here. Yeah, the mirror doing a ton of work, fixing mana early on for black, for double blue. So Tekathal would have a decent attack, but opponent holds it back to maybe prevent the sword from hitting, but yeah, I guess they can make it indestructible here. 
by removing counters from the adaptive. So that's the plan. Um, in which case, just play Bardish. If we don't have a good attack. Yeah, the Anoint with Affliction only would have exiled the 4-drop if we actually got uh, corrupted online, so that would have been pretty challenging in this spot. No attacks. Fonts. Okay, are we getting milled all of a sudden? It is good to enable Decathol, I guess, but we'll see. On the bright side, if they want to make Decathol indestructible, it's going to cost them some life. Decathol turns sideways. So we might be able to get an attack in with a sword or force a chum block from the mirror. So we'll start there. Could have also moved the Bardish, but I'll be able to move the sword more easily than Bardish. Right, mirror chumps as expected. And Augury. So they can proliferate onto the adaptive and the font. Play Vran, and then question is where to move the sword. I guess the downside is that the Hive Master dies if we move the sword away from it, so it could complete devotion the Hive Master itself. But if the Hive Master dies, we trigger Vran, which is not necessarily a bad thing, and we'll get a new token as well. So I think it's still okay. And then pass. Opponent on the mill plan. Alright, Black Sun's Twilight is gone. So I won't be able to rely on that. And yeah, mill 4 now with the double proliferate starts adding up. So it could be a legitimate win condition. The sword hitting the opponent also kind of mills us for two. So that's not great. So now they can kind of just sit back and win with Tekuthal now that our one answer is gone. So we're in a bit of trouble. Attack. Make them make Tekuthal indestructible. And then I guess we won't quite be able to take it out with charge since we only have four creatures. So I maybe shouldn't have gone for it yet. But they'll at least have to remove some counters, I guess. Well, I can now charge something else like Glissa, but sadly not a card that matters. Maybe I could have tried to set it up by attacking with a non-first strike creature. Complete devotion, let's say, on token. And then charge. Still would have been pretty tricky to set up, I feel. So now we're just on the mill plan. Mill for four each turn. It's gonna add up very quickly. So maybe I should still kill Glissa here. Expands. Not incredibly helpful. So let's say we attack with Duelist to force a chump, attack with a token to drain, or I can just move the sword to the token, which would then die if they block with Tacothal, and if they take it, we get to trigger sword. That seems better. Could have also considered attacking with duelists. 
Okay. And then move sword again. We're gonna need to top deck something. So I might just cycle this complete devotion just to draw. Mantis. Doesn't really change the equation. Fifteen cards left. Mill for four. Yeah, I think we're probably at our last turn to draw something relevant. A raptor. I guess we can raptor fly the duelists and then the token attacks, so at least we get to connect with a token if they decide to block the duelist. Although it's awkward if I exile White Suns here, since I'm not going to have the mana to cast it unless I also exile a land. And yeah, there goes our last chance, I think, at a victory. So we do get to connect with a sword at least. But with nine cards left, feels like uh, it's going to be too late. Okay, so I can move the Bardiche just to trigger Vran opponent down to two. And then how do we try and set up lethal next turn is a question. I guess we have Flyer attacking and equipped Rebel. Alright, I guess we are still in it with a chance. Mill for four. Didn't check to see for that to an all-out attack. Spell Dancer is fine. Or is it? I guess it's not fine because it's a blue blocker. Which can block my protection creature. Although if they do, I can move the sword to finish off my token. Tekathal goes in front of Raptor. That's a force block. Spell Dancer in front of Token, that's a force block, takes two damage. Move Sword, Token dies, Vran finishes off her opponent. That should do it. Alright, we're down to two cards in library. And I guess just a flyer dying to Vran also does it. Oof, wow. The last possible moment. And we got there. Probably could have played that game a little bit better. Not sure if there was a window for us to set up removing Tekathal, but uh, yeah. Sword carried us to victory in that last one for sure, alongside our two drop. Slowly draining them. Awesome. So good to seven wins and sealed. And yeah, that's gonna wrap things up for this video. But I wanna thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.